Okay, so a few announcements. If you tuned in to the live I did earlier this week, you already heard this, so I'm just going to be brief about it. Uh, three things. First one is the Guild knife that I've been working on with JB Knife and Tool. I should have the prototype pretty soon. Uh, hoping I can post up some, uh, some pictures or some video of it as early as next week. Uh, someone asked about a folding knife. Uh, we haven't discussed it. Uh, but, who knows. Second thing, uh, doing a joint project with Carlos Romanos uh, in the Philippines. And Lee Morrison, myself, we're going to be doing a online seminar. We're each going to do one section. It's going to take place over the course of three weeks. We're each going to do multiple uh, broadcasts so people from different parts of the world can tune in at different times. That will be starting in late May and going through June. Uh, Carlos Romanos will be doing uh, his stick fighting system. Lee will be doing urban combatives. I'll obviously be doing the knife work. And uh, SAP class, I'm, like I said, I'm thinking of doing that on a Saturday. Beyond that, uh, tonight, as I said before, if, uh, if you have an extra shoe laying around, go grab it real quick. We're going to get started in just a minute. For the rest of you, we're going to start with a review of the basics, just because we have some new people tuned in the last few weeks. If this is your first class, it's going to seem like we're throwing a lot of information at you. Don't worry. You can go back. We have all the old episodes on YouTube, so you can check those out. And then we're going to get into some pendulum work and some foot trapping before we're through tonight. Okay. So go and grab your knives. Let's go through the basics. So side grip, point down, edge in. Start with the eye spike. Chamber the knife up to your right ear. Shoot it straight into the eye here. Retract it just as fast as it goes out. Don't let it linger in the tar target. Pop it off of the target here. Sharp, quick exhale, every offensive motion. So we're going to hit this here. We're going to follow up with the palm. The palm can go to the chin, the nose, the cheek, or the forehead. So I've told you guys many times, being a bit taller myself, I like to hit the forehead. Uh, knock the head back. Expose the artery. Rip this open here. If you happen to be a bit shorter, you can come up to the chin, achieve the same effect there. So we're going to do five following up to the palm, the forehead, then five going into the right shoulder here to inhibit any counter the opponent may be launching. So let's go ahead and burn these pretty quick because we're just doing a quick review here. So five, eye spike going to the, the forehead or the face. One, two, three. Four, five, now five, same motion with the knife, but we're checking the right shoulder here. One, two, three, four, five, okay. Now, horizontal flick, uh, similar to an abanico motion, Filipino martial arts, only the strike is happening the bottom half of the fist instead of out here with the stick. But the motion going from the wrist facing the opponent to the wrist facing you very closely mimics the abanico motion. So same thing, we're gonna do five following up to the head and five following up to the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five. Five, go into the shoulder. One, Two, three, four, five. Okay, face edge. Bring the knife down, coming above the eye, ripping down, hooking to the outside. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Eye pluck. This one palm is going to be up. We're going to hook, hit the, hit the eye from the outside, pull the elbow back to the ribs, keeping the point of the knife oriented towards the opponent throughout the motion. Make sure you're not hooking and redirecting the knife towards you. If the opponent closes in, you can end up impaling yourself. Or if you just get overzealous with this motion, you may inadvertently stick yourself. So condition yourself to pull the elbow back to the ribs. One, two, three, four. 
five with the shoulder check. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now parting gift. We're going to rip across the eye this way. So taking the point of the knife, coming in usually to the right eye, pulling this back, chambering the elbow back to the ribs again, striking the forehead. One, two, three, four, five. Now five with the shoulder blast. One, two, three, four, five. So, hammer grip. We're going to do vertical slash coming down the face here. Follow up with the palm. It's ripping across either eye. Usually you're going to go to the left so you can step away from the opponent's knife, presuming he's right handed, and press the attack from here. But it doesn't hurt to position working both eyes. So, slash down, palm to the forehead. One, two, three. Four, five. Now five with the shoulder check. One, two, three, four, five. Now horizontal, coming across the forehead here. Follow up with the palm. One, two. And this can actually be going across the forehead to bleed into the eyes, or you can be coming across the eye line itself, either one. Three, four, five. Five going to the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five. So now, eye pluck. Moving out here, pulling the elbow back to the ribs, keeping the point of the knife oriented towards the opponent. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, going to the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Moving to the neck. We're going to get the throat pluck in. Going to the artery. Just like we did with the eye pluck, only hitting the artery, pulling the elbow back to the ribs, here. And we'll go ahead and throw a palm to the face in on the end of this one. One, two, three, four, five. Good, now five with the shoulder check. One, two, three, four, five. Now, reverse throat pluck. Same motion we did to the right eye, this time coming down to the throat here. Follow up with the palm to the face. One, two, three, four, five. Five with the shoulder blast. One, two, three, four, five. Now, going to the brachial artery, keep the blade vertical to come across the artery, sever completely, right here. Follow up with the palm to the face. One, two, three, four, five. Now, with the shoulder check. One, two, three, four. Five. Lung puncture. Flanking. Turn the blade horizontal to go between the ribs. Run it parallel to the ground. Slide between the ribs. Puncture the lung here. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. So now, attacking the throat in hammer grip. Remember the V. We don't want to come straight across the throat, 
because the window you have between the shoulder and the jawline is actually pretty narrow. It's very easy to hit the jaw or hit the shoulder. It's very hard in the chaos of a fight to aim this perfectly to come straight across the throat. So what you want to do, if you're attacking the right carotid artery, come down at an angle here. Little nuance to this, you don't really want to chamber up like I just did and come in. You want to come in more straight and rip down. You want to make sure that if he's advancing on me, if I'm cocking my arm up here and he advances in, I'm going to get jammed up. I want to make sure if he's coming straight in, he encounters the blade and I rip it open here. So, I have this V here. If my hand happens to hit his face, it'll funnel the blade down to the neck. If I happen to come in too low, this can funnel my hand up. So this actually, the V that happens between the shoulder and the head can act as a funnel to redirect your attack. So we're going to rip down here, palm. Uh, five, go into the head. Five, go into the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five. Now go into the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five. Attacking the left carotid artery. This time we're coming up here. So coming up, follow with the palm. One, two, three, four, five. Now five, go into the shoulder. One, two, three, four, five. Throat pluck, same as the eye pluck. Coming in here, this time we're just coming to the throat. We'll hit this, pop the head. One, two, three, four, five. Five with a shoulder blast. One, two, three, four, five. Now, lung puncture. Moving over here. Still running the blade parallel to the ground. Go between the ribs and hit the lung here. One, two, three, four, five. Little nuance about stabbing and hammer grip. Whenever possible, you want to try not to point the blade. I don't want to point in here or point in here. When I'm angling my hand like this, it produces a weaker grip. If I hit something solid, my hand might run up the blade and cut here. A right angle makes for a more sturdy grip. So if you can keep this right angle here when you go in, the chances of your hand sliding onto the blade are reduced a lot. Okay, so now, Come up under the jaw, rip down the body. So we're going to go one, two. One, two. Now notice I'm using this to break my knife free to get this motion going, but I'm also dropping my body weight. I'm ripping down here, keeping my shoulder elevated to help protect my arteries. One, two. What? Three, four, five. Okay, so I know we've done these just about every week. I know you're probably sick to death of going through this. That's the point. As I said early on, I'm a huge proponent of working the basics every single class. The guys who are in the thread now who are in my San Diego class, they'll tell you we do this shit every single week. Even the guys who've been with me. 10 years or more, still worth this all the time because the basics are what's going to come out when you're in a real life altercation. It's fun to do the advanced stuff, the flashy stuff. These basic elements are the ones you need to practice every single session. Ooh, sorry, it's roasting in here tonight. So, when it gets into the structure of Libre in this, in the, as a system, for those of you who have the guild packages, you're already aware of this. The rest of you, I'm not going to dwell on it too much, but Libre is based around eight elements. The number one elements are the attacks to the face. Eye spike, horizontal flick, face etch, eye pluck, parting gift, any of those is a number one element. The attacks to the neck and body 
are your number two elements. So a one-two combination would be striking the eye and going to the body. A two-one combination would be attacking the body and then going to the eye. You do a one, two, two. Um, you could do a two, two, one here. So um, the idea is that you're trying to learn in a conceptual format, not thinking so much about the individual techniques. I'm just thinking number one element, attack the face. And whichever attack happens to come out, that's the one I'm going to use. In this series that we've been doing, these live lessons, we've mostly stuck with number one, two, and eight elements. One being the face element, two being attacks to the neck and body, eight being attacks to the, uh, with the left hand. So the elbows moving in here, the palms, I don't think we've done any slaps yet, eye whips moving in here, any attack that's not with a knife would be a number eight element, we've worked those a little bit. Tonight we're going to touch on some number three and some number seven elements. Number three elements are the pendulum. The pendulum is just one motion, but it can be utilized several different ways. We're just going to do the pressing application of it tonight. So first we're going to isolate the pendulum as a movement. So with the pendulum, it's a hooking motion. So we're moving in here, we're going to hook. Scoop down to about where your rib cage stops and hook to the outside here. So notice the blade is angled away from me here as I practice this. And generally we're going to follow up with the palm to the face or the shoulder check here. So we're moving in here, hooking and palming. So a mistake a lot of, and this motion, the application we'll be using today is going to be clearing the opponent's arm out of the way. If their arm is elevated, we're using this to hook the arm down and out. In a side grip, this is particularly effective because you'll bite into the arm, fillet down the arm, and into the thumb. We had one of our guys in Mexico use this in a um, real life altercation. We bit into the meat of the thumb. The guy's our thumb locked like this permanently, and he just lost all function in it. Um, the clearing motion though, it, the point of it isn't to do the damage with this motion. The damage is the incidental. You don't even really want to focus on trying to get that damage in. If you do the technique right, that'll happen automatically. The application we're going to be working today is going to be to clear the obstruction out of the way. So again, we're moving in here, one, hooking down to the outside. Now using this to clear an arm, the mistake a lot of new students make. Uh, say probably more than half, is they tend to come in and when they go to move the arm, they'll lift their elbow and try and work around the obstruction here. Um, it's a very passive motion and Libre isn't a passive system. So we're not trying to work around the obstruction, we're trying to rip the obstruction down and out of the way. So as you're visualizing this in your mind's eye, think about actually the arm stopping here and then ripping down the arm and hooking that arm to the outside. You're dropping the arm out and moving your knife to the outside. So let's just get 10 reps in without the dummy slow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so the pressing application, as I said, there's several different applications for this mo motion. The thing I love about the pendulum is it's one tool you can use several different ways. You can use this just as a straight attack, hooking to their throat, ripping it open, and attacking. You can use this if he's reaching out to grab onto me to, for a grab and stab. Hooking his arm out of the way, Attacking with the left and pressing my attack here. I can use it if he's actually already attached to me here, ripping his arm off of me here, checking his shoulder, and then pressing my attack. Um, the way we're using it today, we're going to start with an eye attack. Um, this instance will say an eye spike. We're going to assume that this person reacted very quickly and covered up his face. So we hit here and his hand is coming up 
and this, his arm is obstructing the vitals here that I want to hit. So what I'm doing here is I'm hooking this arm and bring it down and out of the way to clear the line to my target. So we're going to go one, two. Just work that right now. Don't worry about the left hand yet. So one, two. One, two. One, two. So let's get ten of those in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So now we're going to insert the left hand. So when we come in here, we're going to scoop and we're going to flank as we do this, moving away from his right side, presumably his weapon hand. We're going to use the palm to push his head to the side. So don't think of this so much as a strike, as a shove to push his head to the side. This will do two things. The head is pushed to the side here. It's going to keep him from spinning around on you or having to reach to hit you with his weapon for a beat. It's not a permanent thing. In, that mo in this moment, in the altercation, there will be a brief instance where I'm impeding his counter by pushing his head to the side here. This also exposes the artery to come in here. So, we're going to go one, two, three. So hitting the eye, pendulum and flank to the side, push the head to the side, go into the neck. So when we go into the neck, ideally, you won't always have the angle to do this properly, but ideally you want to come through the side of the neck, go through both arteries and the windpipe in one stab. That's called a trinity stab. So we're going to go one, flank, hook the arm, push that to the side, trinity stab. So do this a few times by my count. One, two, three. So one is the eye spike. Two, hook and flank, push the head to the side. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Good. So now, let's do a few half speed. One. Two. Three, four, and it's important as you're doing this, don't just blindly do the motion, visualize what's happening in your head. If you have a Bob W in front of you, envision the arms, envision him snapping back, reacting, covering the wound, and actually clearing the obstruction, ripping down the arm, pushing the head, and then sinking into the artery. Try never to just do blind mechanics. Always visualize as you're working. Five. Six. Sorry, let's slow it down a little bit. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay. So now, full speed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Okay. So now, as you're doing this, in the street, people tend to focus on one area. In a street fight, it might be a fist hitting that repeatedly. So this sequence of movements lends itself very well to that, to the idea that I'm just locked on to the head and I'm moving forward and ripping through these targets. 
If you have the presence of mind in a street altercation, when I hit this eye and his hand comes up here to cover, if his hand comes up, he's exposing his left side here. So, if you're aware enough in a street altercation, what you want to do is take advantage of that. When you hit the eye and his hand comes up, his hands come up here, he's exposing this side. So you want to slip the lung puncture in here. So we're going to go one, two. Let's get 10 of those in, medium speed. One, two. Ready? One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so now we've hit the eye, we've flanked, and we've hit the lung. Now we're going to go into our pendulum. We've hit the ribs, and his arm might come down here when he, if he feels that. If that's a good, hard impact, you throw this with some power, he might bring his arm down, expose his artery. If he does, you can go straight into it. But we're going to assume here he doesn't react to this and his hand's still covering the target. So now we're going to do our pendulum after that. So it's the same sequence we were doing here, just on the second beat, we're sneaking in this lung puncture first and then moving into this. So we'll do this slow. Uh, 10 reps, keep it nice and slow. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. So now let's do ten full speed. It's a bit more advanced. If you're not comfortable with this. Do it medium speed, just do every other one with us. So do number one, number three, number five, and half speed if you're not comfortable with the motion. If you are, get 10 in with me full speed. Ready? One, two, two, three. Incidentally, this pendulum is your number three motion. So, attacking the face, number one, attacking the neck and body, number two, pendulum is your number three. So, in the structure of the Libre curriculum, this would be a one, two, three, two combination. One, two, three, two. At five, ready? Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, okay so now, as I said earlier, we haven't had a shoe or a flip flop, now's the time to grab it. So, get your shoe. Put it in front of your dummy, or on the ground, in front of your heavy bag, about where someone's right foot would be. So, we're going to assume that the opponent has their right foot out forward in this instance. We're going to open with a horizontal flick to snap his head to his right. Here. So, as his hand goes to the right, going to move over here. 
step on his lead foot while pushing his head to the side just like we did before. So what this is going to do, when we step on his foot, it's going to keep him from lifting it. When we push the head to the side, it's going to push the center of balance over that foot. And once you push the center of balance past that foot, he can topple over. If he topples over and you keep pressure on the foot, his ankle will snap. One of the uh, executive protection guys we trained actually did this to someone. I uh, guess I could say it was not in America and it was a reporter he did this to. And from what he was told, because he kept moving with the protectee, the guy's ankle swelled up to the size of a basketball. It's probably exaggeration, but point is if they go over, you'll snap their, their ankle. What's also important about this is if he does go over from this, he's going to land with his torso as far from you as possible, which means if he has a blade or a weapon, the weapon is landing as far from you as possible, which makes your escape easier. So we're going to go horizontal flick and flank. One, the foot trap, push on the head. Now, this is already a pretty advanced uh, concept. And as I was saying earlier, it's hard. I try not to get too lost in nuances uh, in training because the little tiny details, you're not likely to remember in an altercation. The basics are going to come out, gross motor skills. If you've never been in a situation where you felt your life was threatened, it's hard to explain. Um, your heart starts racing so loud you can actually hear it thumping in your ears. Your vision tunnels, you start seeing stars, you lose all um, concept of time. Things feel like they're happening all at once and in slow motion at the same time. Your limbs lose uh, fine motor fun, fine motor skills, and you just go to gross motor function. Um, so it's hard to um, keep track of tiny little nuances. But if you happen to have the presence of mind when doing a foot trap, if you want to make it more destructive, especially if you're wearing like heavy work boots. You can make this a stomp, really try to shatter the bones in the feet. Don't get too lost in that nuance, especially until you're comfortable with this. It's just something to keep in mind. So we're going to go horizontal flick, flank, foot trap, push the head here, and stab the ribs. So let's do 10 of those medium speed. One, two, three. Ready? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, sorry, I forgot about the camera angle. If you can't see this on the camera, I'm putting the shoe or the flip flop on the ground so I have something to actually target and step on. I believe we were on seven, eight, nine, ten. So the number seven elements in Libre are your base disruptions, which are low line kicks, knees, foot traps, um, anything that you're using the lower half of your body to attack the lower half of their body. So, if you ever happen to be practicing this concept with, with a training partner, it's very important that when you do this, if you put lateral pressure on them, they start to go over, lift off their foot right away. Um, it's very easy for someone's balance to be compromised, and if you keep pressure on their foot and they fall over, there's a high risk that you're going to snap their ankles. So if you're practicing this with a partner, make sure if they lose their balance and start to go over, lift off their foot. So we're going to do 10 full speed now. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10. All right, so let's call it there for this week. Hope everyone's staying safe, staying healthy. 
And I seem to say every week, doesn't look like the lockdown is going to end anytime soon, at least not for class and training purposes. So let's count on being back here next week, same time, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. I'll have this up on YouTube in the next few days. It might take a little bit longer this week. Probably over the weekend, I'll have this up on YouTube, uh, along with the seven previous lessons. All right, everyone, stay safe. See you next week.